guys, where we are on today's walk, this walk's going to take in seven waterfalls, three aircraft wrecks, and one Viking. So we're in Tint Whistle, and we're going to head up here to the first wreck. So we're going to look at three wrecks. Uh, well, actually, if you count the number of planes, it's about five. One where three hurricanes crashed, um, and there's a Lancaster, and then a, a Lightning, all Second World War wrecks. But yeah, we're in Tim Whistle at the moment. Got a little reservoir down there. Looking over towards Bleak Low. This is the Woodhead Pass Road down here. So we're going to head up here now. Catch a little footpath over to the left and then start to climb. Hey, old Mr. Cat. So, saved in the quarry sign there, slippery ground, no fires, I bet you'll find all sorts of evidence of that. So this, we're going up to an old quarry first, and then uh, run up over onto the tops. Could be a bit boggy, and guess what, Nob forgot his gators, couldn't find them anywhere, so hope not left them anywhere. But we might get some good light when we get to the top, seen some stunning Come up with a tall corpusperal. I find out what it's called, corpusperal rays, I think they call them. But uh, with my rubber lips, I can't really articulate that very well. So, up here now, so first bit of a climb. This looks like the old quarry. So, the path goes around the edge, which is the one we need to take. So, cool, we'll head off over here. Look at that. There's a hell of a quarry. There's a path that goes up over the edge. Um, somewhere. Up by that fence, I think. Wow, yeah. Look at that. Try not to move my camera around as much. I got into a bit of a phase of that but we'll get some pictures and then I'll head off over the top there so you can see right over towards Glossop here pretty certain that's Glossop or is it Hadfield I'll double check big old jet there, big twin a couple of reservoirs through here this is the western end of the Longendale Valley we're going to come back through Tint Whistle so I'll give you a bit of a pot of history of that when we get there, there's not much to say but there's a bit of history, it's been around a while. So we're going to walk along the edge of this quarry then nip over onto this moorland over there and follow a wall. Really is some stunning weather coming through, might be the odd rain shower later but you've got blue skies one minute, black clouds the next which is it's going to make some great photographs, which is why I'm going to photograph that. Stunning views off this style, far better look. See all the reservoirs coming up here. This is the back of Bleak Low. And I think if I remember rightly, Penal Way comes down up there. And in the background over here you've got Kinder Scout. Over towards, cross up over that hill. And what a stunning... The skies are amazing, it's just like, you see that yellow light over there? In the distance just showing through great for photography and I'll get a catch of that before it goes it's a very useful footpath sign <laughs> that's one for finger post Friday up and beyond we go just look at that light passing up the valley there just took a few shots of that that's what I love about autumn lovely dark scudding clouds broken up with the sunshine and corpuscular rays I think they call them look at that stunning that's gonna pass up here over kinder so I might dally a few minutes because that will be quite impressive as it goes over there I'll get some portals this looks like a 
a cave. There's a cave marked on this map. Oh. Yeah, see it down there. Um, it's an old quarry. Quite cool. Blue sky moving over here. Some stunning light just which I took some pictures of really contrasted with these dark brooding hills of uh, bleak low and and the edges in the distance. I think that's probably Howden Moor and stuff like that, possibly over that way. But yeah, just look at this sun moving through. See if I catch that and uh, time lapse it. I'm well, not time, I speed it up, you know what I mean. But that's stunning. I do love the moors. This isn't a very big walk today, it's only about four and a half mile. So I wanted to spend a bit more time finding things and as I keep whinging on about, I'm still not 100% yet, so I'm just taking it steady. I did about nine miles every week and it was a little bit too much and this has got quite a bit of climbing in. So, uh, yeah. Then there's some more cloud coming over that sun now. But look at it, just stunning over there. Look at those rays, fantastic. Beautiful day, got some good photos today, I think. I uh, might spend a bit of time on a couple of them, just getting them just bang on. I don't uh, tend to uh, talk to the camera, mate. I don't tend to uh, edit them much. I sometimes tweak the exposure a little bit, or maybe the shadows and the highlights, but generally I tend to leave them as they are. But anyway, we're going to crack on up here now towards an old sheep fold, and then we follow a wall up to the top of a clough, and then the wreck's not far from there. Like a little way marker that. Can't see anything engraved on it, or if it was, it's gone. There's a lot of old paths. Um, it's an old pack horse route through this valley where they used to uh, move salt mainly, I think, was one of the main products. But uh, yeah, look at that sunlight just coming through there. Fantastic. Scudding through. Wonderful. So we're going to head up, there's a wall over here and we follow that to the left and I think where that fence line is just below that is the uh, is the wreck somewhere so we'll keep on pushing on, oh look at that wall there that'll make a good picture I don't know if I want to fancy trekking down there but it still might make a good picture that No more of these way markers I can see the remains of some writing, but can't really say what it says. Look down here, far near one. <laughs> so, obviously a well-marked path. Um, and to be a sheepfold down here, some an old sheepfold of some type. Another path marker there. It's quite useful. Just to watch my foot in here a bit. Very close to the edge. And uh it won't take much to Ooh. see here where it's slipped a bit, look. So we'll just go around this edge very carefully. Don't really want to have to call the mountain rescue out. And we'll just keep on following around to the edge of this clough. Look at that. You know what, I've not seen anybody either, not a soul, which is always good this time of year. The masses tend to stick to places like Mamtor and that and not come out as much. So uh, if you like your own company, which I sometimes do, which is why I go on these walks, time to just uh, clear your head. I have quite a hectic job, quite a lot of responsibility and pressures, so... Uh, it's always good to come out and not have to think about apart from where am I going next <laughs> and just taking all this scenery in so I haven't really done much walking over here we're right on the northern edge of the Peak District now not far off before you get to the edge of it over by Black Hill and that um, so I don't, I'm not normally frequented this side of the hill I think I'll have to do it a bit more often because it does look stunning
As I say, sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees. This is that sheepfold I was mentioning. See it now, when we come from that way, you can just see. You couldn't see all of the wall, but yeah, clearly a sheepfold, probably quite old, could go back to medieval times. And that tree looks good, that would make a good picture that, wouldn't it? I'll see what I can grab. Almost there. Uh, if I was, you come over the hill, it's a bit more. <laughs> the memorial's off here to the right somewhere. So, not 100% certain I can get to it. Yeah, so we'll see if we can get over, but it's all meant to be open access land. Um, according to the map, and I will just double check. Yeah. So they're meant to put styles in. Hopefully there might be a way of getting over because I think it's just at the bottom of this slope to the right. If not, I can probably get some pictures. But whew, that's the toughest climb I've done for a while and there's still a bit left because that is pretty steep there. But anyway, I seem to recover my breathing quite well. I just seem to get out of breath quite quickly. It's just got the absolute shit scared out of me by a pheasant down there. Literally must have been about two foot from me. And it, you know, I had to jump out. Bloody hell. Scared me shitless. So yeah, it looks like we're just skirting past these rain clouds. You can see the sun trying to break through over there towards Glossop. Um, but we should get some nice views off the top of here. And then hopefully, with all the rain we're having, the waterfalls will be in a bit of spate. But we'll see. Onwards and onwards. Looks like I can get over here. There's somewhere over here. But you can get over this fence. I've removed a bar wire or somebody has. So uh, I'm going to try and find this. I'll catch up with you when I get there. It's meant to be somewhere in all of this lot. But I can't for the life of me see it anywhere. I'm right on the uh, 10 figure grid reference, which is normally quite a small area. It's quite treacherous here as well. But I can't see jack shit. Which is a shame really, because I really did want to find that. I'll, I'll keep looking, but if not, uh, this one was three hurricanes came down in the Second World War. I'll put some pictures up, I'll find them on the internet. Yeah, it was three hurricanes. Um, unfortunately, all the pilots were killed. That was in 1945 on the 22nd of February. And from what I can see, formation flying exercise from RAF Calverly near Newark. And they uh, basically flew straight into the side of this. This is called Tint Whistle Gnar. And there's meant to be a pile of wreckage that people have pulled together. There were three of them. All the pilots were sadly killed. But I just can't find it. Um, I'm smack on the grid reference. So normally that's within a sort of meter square and uh, I can't see anything um, so yeah unfortunately I'm gonna have to pull stumps on this it's quite treacherous this is like a rock fall um, there's all holes and god knows what but uh, yeah a bit fed up with that hoping to find that one we're going to the next one anyway can't always be successful um, I'll find some pictures of it Trousers of a ventilation. Fucking hooked on that. Jesus. Let's get some more. Anyone recommend any good trousers? <laughs> now I've got my bollocks hanging out. Brilliant. Anyway, up here now. One last push. We're at the top. At last. Jesus. 
out of breath, massive hole in my trousers. But you can see Manchester over there, shooting cabin over there. <sighs> Reservoirs, Kinder, Bleak Low, the Woodhead Pass. Stunning. Well, out of breath, rest up a bit. Then we're headed over this way. And then we're going to come back down that brook there, which is where the falls are. You can go over that way. You can see all the shooting butts, but we're going to head down the waterfalls. So probably about halfway around. Whew. Anyway, let's crack on along here now. Follow this fence till we come to like a permissive broadway or something. I think it is. A bit more success on this one. I'm going to do a bit of arse about face, but this is a Lancaster. I'll get some more details up, but yeah, look at those gears, struts and the like. I'll dig some more details out in a second, but yeah, found that one. I'm going to go back in a bit different loop, because actually it'll give me an easier path down to the uh, falls. You can range just above the cloud level here, but yeah, look. Some people drop some of these stones. and uh, take a picture of that yeah quite cool that let's just find out a bit of details about the actual wreck itself now so it's gonna be a couple of seconds and i shall that was bob on the grid reference i was bob on the grid reference before so i don't really know what's going on that's a Lancaster. So, the crew of seven here. This crash happened in. Let's have a look. 20. My eyesight, mate. 23rd to the 12th, 1948, by the looks of it. And, um,. Sadly, they were all killed. Um, they were on a, again, on a night cross crossing exercise. So quite a lot of these crashes tend to happen during either training exercises or ferry flights. But uh, yeah, they've collected all the bits that they can find. These are clearly like wheel struts, uh, planetary gear, stuff like that. I'm gonna take a few pictures. There's a cross there. Very good, and uh, yeah, there's a few crosses around here, and a couple of these pebbles that people drop, and, and some poppies that people have placed. Should have probably brought something myself, really. There's a bit more struts over there as well, so I'll find out the details. Um, very sad, they were all killed, unfortunately. And I will uh, post that up, take some pictures now, and then we'll go and find the other one, which is a P38 Lightning. So we're going to go back over this way, drop down towards the footpath and we should be able to find that. I think that one's got a post by it, so at least we can get two out of three. I'm confident now I was in the right place earlier, so it makes you wonder what's happened to the wreckage. Hopefully um, I've just missed it and people haven't took it. Anyway, so that's the second of the wrecks. Um, I'll catch up with you shortly and uh, yeah, um, speak to you soon. now coming in so navigation is going to come a bit more fun we have a track here just skimming across the tops I must admit oh a grouse I must admit um, this is where these 
phone apps, GPS, for me anyway, really do come into their own. It's all right taking compass bearings on land like this. You know, you can use contours, you can try and use visual references, but when it really comes in, you know, <laughs> knowing exactly where you are is a godsend. And uh, so I'm all for using technology. I have got a compass and a, a map in my backpack as a backup. Because you know technology can fail you. Um, so yeah, we're going to wander across here and veer off to the right and drop down onto another path. And this P38 Lightning wreck is off there. Uh, so we're just below the cloud base here. It's quite cool. So I'm going to take some more bearings. And I'll catch up with you in a bit. Here we are. This is the next one. The P38 Lightning Wreck. Found that. What's left of it? Again, I'll find out a bit more about it and uh, take some pictures and put some information up. I just found a bit of information. I've got a bare minimum information on this, but I know a couple of websites where um, I've got some more information. So, yes, there's a Lockheed P-38J Lightning. This crashed on the 10th of May 1944, killing the one and only pilot. So he got a lost control in the cloud and struck the hill while on a on a training flight from Gox Hill near Barton on the Humber. So they've collected what fragments are left and um, they've put them here in memorial. Good to see there's a lot left there, some nice crosses and memorials. To this path, the path that follows this fence line, we'll take that back and then drop down to the waterfall. So, we've been to the three sites, we found two of the wrecks, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, not a bad hit rate for me. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll probably I'll find some pictures of the one that was uh, on, on that rock face. I really just could not see the wood for the trees there. If anyone knows, let me know our grid reference. I mean, I got a 10 figure grid reference and I was bang on the money, and normally that gives you a a metre square sort of space to look at but anyway we'll head down here there's a bit of a track through here it's going to take some pictures you can see the reservoirs down there and then we're going to head back over here and then down to the waterfalls so i'll catch up with you in a bit there's a bit more of a debris pool there just come across that purely by accident but that's clearly again to do with a crash so they must have come in this way into the hillside so there's a bit more debris there that was a pure look, but I'll take that as skill. So yeah, head down to this path now, and I'll catch up when I get there. This is just so treacherous. There's all these uh, rocks. You can see there, that's grouse shit. Pretty certain that's grouse pellets. But we're gonna head down here now onto this path. See you shortly. Look at the way to how deep it is. That can normally be a sign of 
old paths and routes because it's worn in that much because they've been used for so long so then you know, it could be an old pack horse or foot route over the hills um tenant whistle was on the route so you don't know do you so we just come down there off the tops you can see the shoot shooting cabin over there someone yawping they're just fucking about to be honest with you didn't sound like help <laughs> um I wonder if you could sleep in that cabin. It's quite new. Anyway, we're gonna head down here, cut over to the falls and then walk down the falls and back round for the village. Some stunning rays over there again. I will find out what they're called. I think corpuscles something to do with blood. Yeah, just some knobheads over there shouting and yelping. Looks like they might be out for a wild camp. I bet they're going to the, I bet they're going to the secret bovy. The secret bovies of the Peak District. They're all marked on the maps, mate. <laughs> Ain't that bloody secret, not with YouTube and Instagram anyway. So yeah, we're gonna follow it down here and then we'll take a bit of a shortcut over. So we catch the first of the falls. They're marked on the map as a little black line normally. So yeah. Look at them cool rocks there, I wonder what that was. It's a whole row of rocks or stones. That's man made something or whatever, isn't it? Let's take a picture of that and see if I can find out what it is. See the falls over there. I ain't going to go back up there, but that's the first two or three. I'll get the bigger ones down on this path here, I think, by the looks of it. So I'll see if I can drop down, but you can just see them here. I'll take some pictures. Look at all these waterfalls here. We'll follow it down as a path drops down onto it a bit further up but just look at that there's a big one up there but uh, see if we can get some photographs look at that superb I love the sound of running water this will be alright for a camping spot here won't it it's off the path brilliant First colour of it from all the feet. But we'll head down there. We'll keep to our left side, I think. And then we can follow it all the way down by the looks of it. We'll look at these falls. Seven. There's more than that, mate. We'll go up here to this big one. Then we'll probably catch a quick brew. And uh, I bet it's just in spate brilliantly in the uh, storm babbit and all that. Bloody hell. So yeah, we'll go up here. It's a bit boggy, but not the way around on that edge there. Look at that. Can't quite see this big one here. There's a big waterfall here, but this is a bit precarious. Um, let's see if we can go another shot from the other side, maybe. But we'll drop back down, grab a brew some pickies and then uh, wind our way down oh. Oh. 
not the queuing's champion, Mr. Hengist, but uh, an ex-best thing, I'll tell you like this. Yeah, watch Hengist walk camps. He's a easy one, guy. It's after that every week, even so. Uh, we always have a couple of cans of McEwen's champion. It's about 7.3%. <laughs> oh. Proper rip the gusset out of the trousers. So I have to go and get a new pair. I think I've got some money for my birthday, so um, that's what I'll be going on. Me, the present turns up Monday. Watch this space. That's going to be amazing, man. Um, I'll show you that when I get it. Uh, I also going to do a shout out. I don't, can't remember her name. Anyway, there's a lady who delivers Amazon packages or packages to me occasionally. And uh, I was in Bradwell Chippy last night getting my tea. And so I walked in and she's like, hello Mr. Viking. And then there's a good old chat and I can't recall her name. I'm not sure if you told me. If you are, this is a mention for you. Put your name below so next time I see you, I can call you by your name. It's my memory is horrendous. I might well have told me. Yeah, this is fabulous. Great little walk that. Um, about four and a half mile, I reckon I've done five. I did my next a bit at arse about face because I missed the uh, missed the turn, so I don't know if you want to say, but I sort of saw a star in the distance and assumed uh, that was um, that was the path I needed, but it was a bit further on actually. So I actually cut back and did um, uh, the second two in reverse order, so the Lancaster and then the uh, Lightning. But yeah, found them, which is good, and there's plenty of wreckage there, so. Um, I'll do a bit of uh, digging on that Hurricane one, because uh, something's off there. There's definitely something off about that. Uh, there's meant to be a pole in all sorts, apparently, but I can't really see anything of that nature. You just don't know these days, do you? There's a lot of idiots about and stuff like that that might have vandalised it, you know, you just don't know. Hopefully not. Anyway, yeah, so this is, uh, this is the seven balls of... Uh, uh, God, where am I? I'm losing the team. I'm losing it, physically and mentally. So we're going to wander down now, pull us back into the village, meant to be quite acquainted with the village, and we'll walk back through to the car. So yeah, that's the latest and greatest. Um, not much on my health wise, I'm back on gout tablets now. Um, that seemed to be triggering endlessly ever since I went on these blood thinners. So I don't know if uh, that's related or for instance, so I'm back on them, I'll down a second shot. Playing off real ale, we're doing tonics now, and cocktails, so I'm all refined. Ha! Anyway, you know me, I'm not refined at all. I can be worthy. So, I'll have this, bag of crisps and a chocolate protein bar, and then what I'll do is I'll catch up with you as we uh, walk back down the, the hollow this finished brooks pool. Armfield Brook, this goes down to the farm. So we'll follow this. Can't really get to that big one, it's really true. You've got to cross over here and uh, it's getting a bit cold now, I'm a bit tired, so uh, I'll head back I think, uh, to the uh, As always, if you're watching this and you like it, subscribe to the channel, share it, really appreciate it. Had a big boost in subscribers, but uh, I'm suspecting that might drop because I think a lot of them watching the uh, floods videos that I put up. That went absolutely crazy. But if you're not and you're sticking around, share it, subscribe, like, comment, interact. It all helps the channel uh, develop and get bigger. Um, my whole aim with this is just to educate people. I'm not out to make money. I'm not out to fame and fortune. I'm just out here to uh, you know, help educate people, show people the good walks. Head over to the Facebook group page all the GPX routes on the YouTube videos themselves, I can go very detailed, blow by blow, and link to things like the Outdoor Active Routes, if you're an Outdoor Active member, or I say GPX well. So head over to all of those, lots of useful information there, and I'll catch up at the end of it. We've come up and, because uh, he runs through a bit of a gorge there, and I don't think there's any path through there, so we've come up this path, and I've just realised my GoPro has a brain fart now and again, and it's chosen, have a brain fart 
whilst walking along all these beautiful waterfalls. What a friggin' ball lake that is. Anyway, we'll head off down here. Um, we'll probably come back another day. I think it, it'd be better to walk up the waterfalls rather than down them. It'd be easier to navigate and see where you're going. So uh, I think that's what we'll do next time we come. Uh, maybe next year in the summer or something. Proper stone wall in that. Look at that. A nice big layer under the top, like, stop, top stones here. You don't always see that that often. That's proper that is. They might make a good picture, but look at that. That's craftsmanship. I'd love to learn how to do that. Um, I've actually volunteered for the Peak Park Conservation Volunteers, I think. Something like that. So, they do stuff like this. So, what I might do when I get a chance is uh, go down and do a bit of that. Look at that. That's been stood for hundreds of years. Amazing. Beautiful cobbled road here. You don't see that too often these days. Barnfield Lane. Brilliant, look at that. Glorious little lane this. I'll take some stills off a video I think. It looks quite good on the camera. But this winds all the way down into the village. Look at that. Superb. I think I was going to go in the Countryside Lane Appreciation Society. <laughs> They've got a Facebook group. I might put a link to that as well. So they, uh, I think it's run by somebody called Peak Lass. She's quite a presence on social media. Does her own catalogues and gifts and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I might be get a bit better picture here of that church. Look at that. The sun's shining there. I'll catch that now. This just goes on and on and on. It must be a quarter of a mile, I bet you. It's a uh, oh, little cabin there that sells stuff. Loads of these signs. Clearly, uh, this, this road is a bit of a dog shit magnet, probably, as these lanes sometimes end up being. But yeah, we're just going to head into the village now. But that is a really long cobbled road. I mean, that must be one of the longest around, I'll bet you. I'll have to do a bit of digging on that. Oh, it's a perler. They just didn't have to build things back then, didn't they? So we're just going to enter the village now. We'll have a quick scout around and then head back to the car. Here we are, coming onto the main drag. So, not far to the car now. So that's a Pennine Bridal actually that goes through there. So it's like a typical mill town, isn't it? There's the market cross. And we head up here, if I remember right. It's all set up for Remembrance Day. So that's Tin Whistle. <coughs> Goes back to the Doomsday Book. There's an old pack horse road ran through here where they used to bring the salt through. So, uh, sort of 11th century place. Got a couple of brass bands knocking about, but the biggest claim to fame is that uh, Vivian Westwood was born here. So, there you go, the old fashioned Easter. Anyway, head back to the car now. There's a well. So I'll be dressed up every year. Right, <coughs> well, I've stopped at Snake Pass on the way home to do a bit of a outro, as they call it, because someone was giving me a right evils out of her, her 
kitchen window because I'd parked outside our house. I get that, I do get it. But we're up on the snake pass, looking a bit bleak. As always, it's all in the cloud across bleak low and high shelf stones, you can't even see it. So yeah, that was a good walk, that. Um, about five miles I did, uh, let me have a quick look at the stats, uh, just under 900 foot of ascent. But if you look at it, and if you can see that, it was quite a steep bit that was, hence I was a bit slower. Um, I think I averaged 1.7 miles an hour, which isn't great, and I did it in three hours. I would normally expect to do something like that in two, but I was stopping a lot and I was filming and stuff, and I was taking my time deliberately. So uh, it's not too bad, about two mile an hour on the flat. So I'm not too obsessive, but I just know it's quite different to what I normally do. So definitely still not back to walking fit, but it was a good walk. We got the three wreck sites in and managed to find, well, we found all three. I'm, I'm confident I was in the right place. We just couldn't find the records on the first one, the Hurricane, but hey, there you go. So uh, yeah, I put the GPX route up and all that good stuff. I enjoyed that. I found, like I say, you know, the waterfalls are really cool. You can do an easier walk up from Tintwistle. Tintwistle Whistle itself was quite a cute little place. So yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Good to get out again. I probably, uh, well, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be out next weekend because um, my daughter's passed a test and I said I'd contribute towards buying her first car. But she lives on Shetland, so there's not much of a market up there. So I found a 19 year old Yaris that's in the budget the full service history and all that but I'm going to be doing a hell of a road trip 400 miles up to Aberdeen in a 19 year old Toyota Yaris so that I might film that because it could be fun and I'll end up a train journey on the way back which again might well be fun knowing how the train services work in this country but uh, probably in a week I'm going to be doing a video on uh, you saw my Facebook post I did a couple of uh, a post about a couple of uh, freebies I'd received so I'm going to do a quick comparison of those which are like you know with a product I've already got, so just do a side by side comparison. And then I'll go start looking for some new trousers as I rip the gusset from back to front with me clackers hanging out and everything. <laughs> on some bloody, on a bloody fence. But anyway, not to worry. So we're going to head off. There's a few brave souls coming down now. Probably going to the B29, reckon. Probably forget, regretting that on a day like today. Going to head home now catch up with you don't forget to like and subscribe and all that and uh, keep on hiking